Sweden, as one of the few countries in the world with independent tank development capabilities, at least in the past, is well known among military enthusiasts for its development of the turretless S-Tank. However, Sweden did not persist with this design style and ultimately compromised by purchasing the Leopard 2 main battle tank. But, did Sweden not attempt to design a successor to the S-Tank? The answer is yes, and that is the STRV-2000 tank project. Around the mid-1980s, Sweden planned to select the next generation of main battle tanks. The tanks did not necessarily have to be domestically produced. They could be purchased directly from abroad or produced under license. The Swedish domestic industry also proposed several concepts for the STRV-2000 main battle tank. Today, we will introduce the T-140-40, which is the closest to success among these tanks. There was some controversy regarding the choice of the main weapon for the tank. At that time, the new generation of main battle tanks in Europe and the United States had all chosen a 120mm caliber. Sweden initially recognized the power of the 120mm smoothbore gun, but perhaps in order to give their tank a firepower advantage, they decided to switch to a 140mm caliber tank gun. In theory, it would increase the armor-piercing capability by 25% to 50% compared to the 120mm smoothbore gun. A larger caliber main gun has its advantages and disadvantages. A larger sized shell means a decrease in ammunition capacity with only 29 rounds available and an autoloader must be installed in the vehicle to ensure loading speed. Having fewer main gun rounds also means that the crew needs to carefully consider each shot, especially considering the different types of ammunition such as smoke rounds, armor-piercing rounds, and high-explosive rounds, each of which will have a smaller allocation. To ensure firepower output, the tank's auxiliary weapons plan included a 40mm machine gun and two 7.62mm machine guns. They could replace the main gun to attack soft targets or lightly armored targets, saving main gun ammunition. The machine gun had a reserve of 148 rounds. Based on the T-140-40 model, the machine gun and one machine gun were installed on the left side of the main gun and could independently elevate and depress. The tank also had illuminating flare launchers to illuminate targets at night. In terms of protection, the tank was required to have a low profile and excellent protection capabilities. In addition to designing a low profile exterior for the tank, the armor was arranged using basic armor with additional armor. Additional armor plates were installed outside the main armor, and they could be quickly replaced after being damaged. The additional armor plates were the focus of the tank's defense and could be made from different materials. In 1989, Sweden conducted research on composite armor, and if everything went smoothly, the tank might have used new composite armor. The front armor of the tank was equivalent to 800mm thick steel armor when facing armor-piercing rounds. In terms of power, the tank's engine was installed in the front of the hull to increase frontal defense and improve crew survivability. According to Swedish requirements, with a larger caliber main gun and heavy armor, the weight of the entire tank would definitely not be low. The combat weight was estimated to be 52 tons, so a 1500 horsepower engine needed to be installed. As per Sweden's usual practice, the tank's off-road mobility was a key consideration, which was necessary for the country's terrain. However, a tank this heavy could not be expected to have amphibious capabilities. The T-140-40 tank had a crew of three, all positioned on the right side of the tank. The driver was inside the hull, while the tank commander and gunner were inside the turret, with the gunner in the front and the tank commander in the rear. Among the entire STRV-2000 tank project, only the T-140-40 tank made it the furthest and had a scaled model. The other models, such as the T-120B with a 120mm gun, did not even have models. When Sweden encountered the new generation of tanks from foreign countries, they realized that their STRV-2000 tank project had many shortcomings in various aspects. The design itself was complex and expensive, and the 140mm main gun would need to be redeveloped. In the end, Sweden abandoned the entire project and turned to purchasing finished products from abroad. 
The T-140-40 tank from the STRV-2000 tank project was estimated to have a combat weight of 52 tons, a length of 10.2 meters, a width of 3.7 meters, a height of 2.26 meters, and was powered by an MTU-883 12-cylinder diesel engine. It had a maximum speed of 70 kilometers per hour and a maximum range of 500 kilometers.